What's up everybody, Superdorks fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2014 Nissan GTR. Huge, huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales for providing me with this very sweet GTR to review for you guys today. So about the 2014 GTR, well I already reviewed a 2009 about three years ago and haven't driven one since, so I'm really, really excited because it was a lot of fun last time. I'm very excited to drive one again. But uh, you know the changes that they made, for the 2011 model year, I believe, they gave it a facelift and so uh, you know you have this new uh, front air dam and those new little LED lights there that uh, kind of gave it a more modern look than the previous version. And uh, otherwise though, it's unchanged and that's totally fine because I still think this car looks stunning, so mean, even though you know it's mostly the same exterior uh, for the past you know six years seven years now uh, it's totally okay with me because I think it looks phenomenal I mean just from every angle it looks so mean and menacing and uh, it's still kind of a sleeper though too it's not too showy and those that aren't car people it probably won't stand out to them but uh, those that know I mean it just has such a presence and it's really great to look at. Whereas for the interior of the 2014 GTR, well, uh, it's really cool. It's mostly unchanged since 2009, but that's totally okay. Anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, I really love these seats. They're super comfortable, but yet they really hug in nicely. They're not overly aggressive, so they fit, you know, all body types, but my skinny frame uh, is nice and snug in these seats, and they just, they feel really, really great. Uh, you know, just awesome bolstering. And like I said, it still has a nice blend of comfort and uh, sportiness. Next to the steering wheel in the GTR, which is awesome. So a basic round wheel, uh, you have a nice perforated leather here on the 93 portions, and it just feels really great in your hands. A nice 93 grip, tiny little 10 and 2 notches, but those feel good as well. Uh, and then I love these magnesium paddle shifters that are mounted to the steering column and just feel great. You know, they have the uh, leather uh, wrapped on the, the portions of them, but you can still see the exposed magnesium. It's just really great. I mean, they're super heavy. They feel really, really awesome to pull the paddles. And uh, yeah, otherwise, you have a little assortment of buttons here, but uh, nothing too overwhelming, just a really great wheel. Next is the gauges in the GTR, which are pretty nice. Uh, you know, nothing too extravagant here. Uh, you, you just have your basic gauges. They look good though. I like the graphics and they're attractive, but just give you your basic information, which is totally okay. I do love the dedicated uh, gear position uh, gauge there. This digital one looks great. Uh, but yeah, really nice gauges there. And then of course, uh, one of the things the GTR is famous for is all the additional gauges you have on the screen here. And uh, these gauges were actually developed uh, by the makers of Gran Turismo. Uh, so they look very uh, video game me and that's really cool and there's I mean as you can see several different menus here you can you know customize it and tailor it to see exactly the information you want to see and um, just a very cool setup there uh, the screen is also touchscreen which is nice you don't have to depend on buttons to uh, work it you know it's all touchscreen um, but you do have the buttons down here to navigate throughout the rest of the thing you know such as map uh, for navigation which is a dated navigation system but hey you're not buying a GTR for a navigation system who cares um, otherwise though you know it's just your basic you know everything is pretty basic Nissan as far as the you know radio controls and things like that but that's okay and then you have your three fun switches uh, as you uh, work your way down here uh, the first one here is for the way that the transmission shifts and also for the red line that's how you uh, you know it'll give you more aggressive throttle and things like that in the R mode the save mode is for snow and whatnot then you have this uh, second switch here which is for the uh, dampers and you know makes the suspension a little more soft if you put it in a comfort mode or stiffens it up if you put it up into R and then this uh, last one here is for the traction and stability controls and uh, so yeah nice to have that customization there with just uh, some quick easy switches. Storage space in the GTR isn't great but uh, most people probably won't care. You have a map pocket here in the doors uh, that you can fit some stuff in otherwise though you know in this whole center area all you have is the shifter and the engine start button. No cubbies or anything um, and then so you just have two cup holders here one that's deeper than the other and then you have this center armrest which which is uh, actually really nice and soft. Uh, it's great for resting your elbow on. Anyway, you open that up and you have a very shallow little center console here that does have a USB jack and a power outlet, um, but otherwise you can't fit uh, too much in there, not too deep, you know, maybe a, an iPod, things like that, but nothing more. Um, though, for those that are looking for an additional power outlet to run your radar detectors and things like that, there is one right here um, to the right of the steering column, and so, uh, you know, that's nice and handy that they thought to put one there as well. Backseat space in the GTR is pretty tight unless you're a kid honestly. Uh, I'm five foot nine and me sitting behind myself uh, I don't have any leg room I have to spread my legs to even 
getting uh, get you know enough room to pull the seat back all the way. Uh, so pretty tight there, but it's you know manageable for uh, you know short trips things like that. Headroom is also again like I'm five foot nine, not a tall guy, uh, and my head is resting up against the glass there and uh, a little bit hunched over. So um, yeah, anyone taller than me probably won't be able to fit back there. Period. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise it's great for kids things like that. But definitely I wouldn't consider it a four seater every day. Trunk space in the GTR is surprisingly deep. Uh, I was really amazed by just how roomy it is. So, you know, it doesn't go very far back, but that's okay because it's just so deep. You feel like you're looking into a well or something. I mean, it just goes way down there. And so uh, because of that, you can easily fit two full-size suitcases, I think, without a problem. Probably more, honestly. And uh, overall, just a very livable, very spacious trunk. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The GTR has this very cool Nissan key fob. It has the GTR logo on it and a nice little key fob there. Anyway, you have this engine start button. You just put your foot on the brake, hit the engine start button. And it starts right up. And that's a very mechanical startup too. So setting off in the 2014 Nissan GTR. Well, the first thing that you notice is uh, just how raw and mechanical everything sounds in here. I mean, you hear every little thing that the transmission is doing, which is mounted behind you, by the way. Um, and it's uh, it's just very noisy. And uh, there's also, I mean, every single little piece of gravel that you drive over, you hear. It's one of those things where uh, it's just, you hear everything going on with the car. Another thing you notice right off the bat is just how sensitive everything is to your inputs. Uh, the throttle response is very touchy. Uh, and every little millimeter that you move your foot, uh, you can feel it in the way the car is driving. Another thing you feel is the steering. Um, the steering weight is uh, a little bit on the light side, at least at low speeds here. Um, but it's, I mean, every, you feel everything through the wheel and uh, it's its very, uh, again, eager to uh, do whatever you command. And um, so it's a very just driver centric, just sensory overload with hearing every little sound and feeling every little thing the car is doing. And in that way, it's super communicative and I love it. As far as the normal stuff like visibility goes, uh, it's pretty good. So, you know, you can see forward very well. The hood drops down nicely so you barely can see it. It feels pretty small to drive as well. It doesn't feel like a large car necessarily, although you aren't sitting as low as you do in a lot of other sports cars. You do sit a little bit higher up. And it's a little bit more of an average seating position uh, compared with other sports cars. Um, but otherwise, it feels great. Another thing you notice, now I'm on a slightly bumpy road here and uh, this uh, suspension is definitely not as soft and comfortable as you may think from a car that you know seems fairly plush you know you got Bose sound system and all this kind of stuff but it's it's actually a pretty bumpy ride I, it's not like horrible it's not like you're on some harsh coilovers or something but it's certainly um, you know a little rougher than most other sports cars I would say uh, but again it's just it makes it more communicative because you feel every little bump and it's not abusive in the way that you feel them uh, but you do certainly feel them it doesn't feel quite as refined as you would like I think but then again and, you know, you can't have Porsche levels of refinement for half the price of a Porsche. So I think that's one of the sacrifices that most people gladly make when they buy a GTR is, yes, you're not going to get the most polished car in the, you know, in, as far as the ride goes and the interior quality and things like that, but the performance is really second to none. All right, so the GTR got a power bump. The last one I drove had 480 horsepower. This one has 545 horsepower and 463 pound-feet of torque. But I am going to, since it's so fast, turn onto the straight road here first and see how it does. Now I got the transmission into R mode and I'm <laughs> like getting nervous. And here we go. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fast! Ooh, wow, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, my side hurts. So anyway, uh, that was uh, very, very fast. So the uh, this 2014 Nissan GTR does zero to sixty in two point seven seconds, which will keep up with any Lamborghini, uh, Bugatti Veyron, you name it. This will keep up at least to 60, and that's thanks to this very quick gearing that just, oof, 
it's so, it's so fast and it's so easy to get in trouble with. You gotta be careful with this thing. Fastest thing I've ever reviewed. Whew. With that short gearing and the way that the GTR has its computer wizardry, it does whatever it does to get you know crazy fast here to 60 times. Now that is with launch control. I'm not going to do launch control in this car because it's not my car and I don't want to beat on it, of course. But uh, even from that rolling start, I mean, it was stupid fast. <laughs> And let's go again, shall we? <laughs> the thing feels like it's trying to pop a wheelie whenever you do that. Even the front end lifts up and it just, you can feel that all-wheel drive just struggling as much as it can to give you the grip to just take off. And it is ph phenomenal. <laughs> it's just so dramatic. It's so exciting. That I know, you know, other cars with rear-wheel drive, like the F-Type R and stuff, that'll have a bunch of drama as well. But this has just as much drama. It's just that you're spinning all four wheels instead of two, which is just, <laughs> oh, it's fun. And it just, oh my gosh, yeah, you feel like you're being sucked into a black hole whenever you go full throttle in any gear. It just, <laughs> just takes off. <laughs> I'm reminded as to why I love the GTR so much. I haven't even gotten it around a corner yet. It's just straight line acceleration would never get boring, never get old. That alone is enough reason to buy this car. Transmission is also very responsive here in this R mode. Very eager to give me the downshifts. Uh, feels much faster because I remember the 09 GTR wasn't quite as quick. <laughs> this thing is crazy. Second gear. is it's not like you know other supercars where you can't even get a second gear without getting your license taken away this you know because the gears are so short you can do first gear second gear even third gear blasts before you end up in you know jail territory so it's it's still very fun and usable you know around town even with you know just getting on it for a split second is enough to give you that rush going around corners in the GTR it's pretty uneventful with just you point and shoot and it doesn't uh, of course this car has just such high limits that you're never ever going to feel like you're on the ragged edge of GTR I don't think unless you're really pushing it at the track and uh, know what you're doing but uh, coming up to the side corner I always take let's see how the body roll is It just sticks. It just goes around no problem whatsoever. Um, and uh, this car, you know, it's not a lightweight. It's around, you know, a little over, uh, I think, 3,800 pounds. But, you know, that's the same weight as like a, you know, modern Mustang GT or something. Not that bad at all. Uh, and uh, it doesn't really feel that heavy to me so far. One thing though, as far as, you know, sound goes, that's always been the sore spot of stock GTRs, is they just don't really have much sound. You do have that engine growl that is exciting. Honestly though, you're so floored by the sensations and the G-forces being imposed on your body that you don't really even pay attention to the sound of it all. Uh, and of course, it's very easy to fix with an exhaust system. Uh, these sound spectacular with an exhaust. But yeah, you know, just driving a normal traffic now, uh, uh, you know, the transmission is pretty good. Now, it's it's still not quite as refined as, you know, all the German transmissions and things like that. It still is a very obviously dual clutch uh, where you can actually, since I said with this transmission, how you hear it going in and out with the clutch, you can hear it engaging, you can hear everything grinding and doing its thing in the gearbox. So anyway, I'm gonna go on some more challenging corners and I'll come back and give you some updated impressions. Alrighty, so I've been driving the 2014 Nissan GTR for a little while longer now. And uh, it's it's very exciting. It's so exciting. In fact, I even had to take off my coat. I'm getting so warm here. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's such a rush. It's just unbelievable performance that you have to experience to truly understand. And again, this isn't my first time. I drove an 09, but this just takes it up another notch with the increased boost pressure to give you that extra horsepower. I mean, it's a pretty good jump in horsepower from 480 to 545. I mean, this thing is stupid fast. And because of that increased power, I feel like it makes it a little more tail happy. It makes it a little more uh, angry, a little more, I guess not twitchy, but it just makes it so that, you know, you do still, if you really do push it in a corner and stuff, it will uh, get a little bit unsettled. Like I said, when you floor it out of a corner, it'll struggle to get traction there. And that really gives you that excitement that normally all wheel drive cars are lacking. And normally all wheel drive, it's like perfect grip all the time and you never have any kind of wheel spin or drama in that way. But with this, it, because it's just so much power and it's just so 
so absolutely bonkers. You still get some of that. And I didn't even turn the trash control off or into the sport modes because once again, I'm on public roads and it's not my car. But I could imagine you put that into the more lenient modes and you'll get even more wheel spin. It's still not as wild as, you know, a drifting, oversteering, rear-wheel drive car. So if that's the kind of thing you like doing is hanging the back end out, then, you know, obviously this wouldn't be the car for you. But for anyone that like really loves a sharp, pointed, exact driving experience and wants the car to do exactly what they're commanding and you know have virtually no limits that you can feel on the street um, at reasonable speeds at least it's just it's phenomenal and um, you know it's it definitely does have a little bit more of the computerized feel to it but so many people complaining about this car not having any soul or being so computerized that it doesn't feel like you're doing any of the driving I, I wholeheartedly disagree because you can feel every little thing the car is doing I mean everything like I said at the beginning of the review is so sensitive to your inputs you really do feel like you're the one that's doing all this you know I mean you do have all these supercomputers backing you up but it definitely feels like you're a hundred percent the one doing the driving you're the driving experience and you still get that fun and it just heightens everything it just it, like I said it makes it feel like you have superpowers you're doing everything but you're just you have higher abilities than you feel like you should have you know I think it still is fun to drive around a back road at 45 miles per hour you know it's not like it's the limits are so high that it's just such a bore at these lower speeds because it's not it's still fun like I said because of all the sensory overload that's going on with everything and uh, you know it's, it still is very fun and I absolutely love it um, and it's just gotten even better it's gotten a little smoother with the transmission here for the newer models it's uh, a little more polished I think um, you know it still uh, isn't up to par with a lot of the other 2014 model cars as far as um, you know infotainment and refinement things like that go but like I said you it, this this kind of performance at this kind of price I know they've increased the GTR prices over the years uh, and now it's not quite the bargain it used to be but it still is a phenomenal bargain for the performance you get and uh, so you know at this kind of performance at this kind of price some sacrifices have to be made and uh, so I think that the sacrifices they made were all the right ones uh, it still is a uh, you know plenty nice to daily drive a couple last things to mention here about the GTR is you know originally when I first started driving I was like it's kind of a rough bumpy ride but now you know that I'm on reasonably well paved roads and I have the suspension in the comfort mode it's totally fine honestly it's just as comfortable as anything else it's it's really pretty impressive just how much it soaks up bumps honestly and it's not nearly as bad as I first thought other things to note uh, as far as refinement goes the Bose stereo system for anyone that cares is really good actually you got those like subwoofers or additional speakers there in the back they give you some nice bass and uh, really uh, give you a good sound experience the brakes are as you would expect 100% fully adequate for any kind of street driving I think unless you're you know on some mountain road going downhill the whole time I don't think you're gonna even challenge these brakes honestly it's just 100% it's a 10 out of 10 and um, you know I can't find a single thing to say that's bad about it really I mean like I said I wish that I didn't hear every single little pebble that was uh, you know getting scraped up against the wheel wells um, but other than that it's really just phenomenal that's nitpicking in its finest so um, yeah just an amazing car and uh, you know everyone for the most part has agreed that a GTR is amazing already uh, I'm just here stating the obvious again but whenever you get the chance to review a GTR you don't turn it down so anyway huge huge thanks to Harrison Auto Sales for providing me with this car to review for you guys today this one is for sale at least as of me filming this it is it will probably sell fast but this one is currently for sale I think it's going for high 70,000s I think just under 80,000 bucks and this one only has 1800 miles on it um, uh, which is a huge savings over the 101 uh, MSRP that this car has 101,000 and change uh, so uh, really a great deal for anyone looking for a GTR by the way so all the links are in the description below just give them a call and they'd be more than happy to help you out anyway thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time take care